Yo, it's your boy Skiff. You're tuned into the RottenAppleTV.com. Holla at your boy, all hands on deck. So the name Skiff, how did that come yeah. about? Yeah, the name Skiff, it's actually a family name. So it's my middle name. So my grandfather's last name, my mom's maiden name. So actually, I. A bunch of my boys are always like, yo, I don't really feel comfortable calling you Skip. <laughs> yo, it's my middle name, like, it's my real name, so it's better than that. It's just part of me. Exactly. All right. How long have you been rapping, and when did you think that you know, rap was, was, was for you? Yeah, um, I was rapping in, like, middle school, you know, like, 01, 02, I was rapping, but, um, I never really took it as a career until probably my junior year in college, which was like 2010. So that's when I really saw myself doing that for, for my career. And I knew I would do it. <laughs> How did you and Clef meet up? How did that story be? Yeah, well, originally it was just, um, we had a mutual friend. So it was just sending records back and forth through her. So once she got the, first initial record that he heard. From there it was a process for me and him just talking. And then I actually had the chance to go out to his house in Jersey and sit down in his studio out there and play records back and forth. And that was just like a life changing moment almost, you know what I mean? Okay. How long have you known Clef since? since uh... Uh, I've known Clef probably for like three years now. Three years? Okay. Yeah, so you know the first two years it was really just just trying to prove myself to send records, you know, send records every night, basically. So, Absolutely, okay. Really, so okay. it just shows you, if you're out there and you're in school, you're doing anything, fucking keep making music, it's definitely possible. Absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, I heard a couple of tracks from you, man, and um, I noticed uh, in your track, uh, Hard to Tell, you, you sampled one of you know, these classics, and really Hard to Tell, and in your, um, in your hook, you said, uh, if people listen to you, something to that effect um, that these rap, these, under, these entertainers are corny, it's hard to tell. Yeah, Could yeah. you like briefly like discuss what you meant by that line? You know? Well, it was just kind of like how I was feeling. Like, you know, I often I, I drive a lot, so I'm always in my car, um, just like road trips. So I'm just always. I got to a point where I was just kind of feeling frustrating listening to the radio, where mm -hmm. you know nothing was sounding like I thought it should sound, and I thought people should be actually being, you know, a lyricist and picking the pen up every single day I wake up. I was just almost frustrated, like why it, you know, people should be putting more love into the pen, you know? So that was me just more expressing and like venting my my kind of feelings on why people aren't, aren't putting their heart and soul into music. That's, okay. that's, that's how I feel. So is that the kind of sound that you're trying to bring to the, to the table? Is that what you're trying to bring to the game? Yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to bring excitement and actually get people like excited about lyric lyricism. You know, like we were talking about earlier, there's a few other people doing it, but I feel like everything comes back. So, you know, lyricism is something that will will always be popular and always be important to me. I also noticed that uh, another another one of your tracks, "Days and Confused," has reached a little bit over twenty one thousand views on, on YouTube. How does, that, video, yeah, right? how does that feel? Like, 21,000 people took the time out to listen to that track, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling. Um, I obviously feel still like feel like it should be doing better. Oh, yeah. But, you know, it was it was a fun video to shoot. We had a lot of fun, as you can probably see. We had fucking speedboats and fucking pig masks and, and anything else in between. But it was fun, you know. Um, it feels good. I want... The whole objective really to the video is we want people to have fun watching the videos but also to be able to take enough time out while they're watching it to actually listen to what I'm saying. If you actually listen and get one or two verses in, you'll actually be like, oh shit, he actually can, you know, he can really rap and saying something versus just watching it and having fun. But, you know, versus the standard video where, where you're just you're just rapping with a whatever backdrop. We wanted to have more fun and try to get a bigger audience to have fun with us, you know? Yeah. Earlier you had said, um, you spoke, speaking about uh, Nas, but if we kept them alive, check my origin. All these rappers who are your top five influences? The, the people that you listen to that, that are from Cabo to Colorado, I keep in mind, we mind. It's a tough question. It's a tough question. I probably have like three different groups of boys that are getting some shit for this, but I would say influential probably is like Nas. Um, AZ, 4Mega, 
Then for the fifth, I would put the slaughterhouse as a whole off of the fifth. Because there's just too many people, but that's that's the number five. And don't hate me for saying it's number five, but it's just I couldn't fit all of them in. Really. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Yeah. As an artist, where do you see yourself? I just really want to break barriers. So, and when I say that, I just want to do things that people don't expect but without losing the integrity of the music itself. So I really just want to surprise people um, with my beat selection, with my topic selection, what I'm talking about. Um, what I've really learned is, you know, shock rap is great, but unless you have the right topic to talk about and you're actually, it represents you, it's not gonna work. So it's really just a thought process of what, what can I do that people haven't done before, but that still fits me. You know what I mean? I feel like a lot of artists coming up, um, they want to do whatever's hot or one thing. But then also there's a other group that are more creative that want to do things that it's more shock value. But if it doesn't rep represent you and people don't believe it, it's not going to stick. So just kind of finding a balance between that and representing you while you're doing it. Right. Okay. Besides rap, what else do you do? Oh man, big basketball player. Okay. Play ball, you know, like my whole life. I actually went from uh, from San Francisco to New Hampshire in high school to play basketball. Like I went to a prep school for basketball, so that was my first love. Um, what else? You know, a great walker. I love taking walks. I enjoy bike rides. Um, you know, but no, but you know, just just hanging out. I love listening to music. Um, not just rap, but all forms of music, but really just, I'm laid back and just like having fun. Anything that can put a smile on my face is usually with that. What new works have you been doing? Yeah. Uh, I'm working on an EP right now. It's called No Healthcare in Hip Hop. So that's, that's a statement itself. But um, So we're going to put that out um, probably at the end of January, early February. Um, I'm actually going to be on uh, GMAT Good Music All Day Tour. Okay. okay. It's, uh, it's 53 states, so we're going to be everywhere. So, but um, we're going to put out the project No Healthcare and Hip Hop. Then about halfway through the tour, we're going to put out a second EP. Okay. okay. So, No Healthcare and Hip Hop's probably going to be like six, seven, eight songs. So, okay. it's going to be quality over quantity for sure. As far as your um, rapping is concerned, who who do you see yourself? You know, wanting to work with what artists that are currently in the industry right now that you would like to work with and create some music together. Yeah, I mean, that I couldn't sit here and make it's too long of a list, but um, Let's give it a couple. You know, first one that comes to pops into your mind. Yeah, I mean, anything the classic, classic East Coast hip hop probably. Okay. Like, okay. You know, like Nas. I actually did a song. Um, I have a song coming out with AZ. Where I sat down and I actually wrote AZ a letter from like a fan point of view mm -hmm. about what's wrong with hip hop right now. Okay. And he okay. responds to the to the record. So you can look forward to that on the first EP. All right. For sure. Okay. For sure. Definitely. But um that was you know, when I did that, that was like one of the biggest accomplishments. So um you know, there's so many artists coming out right now, like Joey Badass, mm -hmm. Troy Ave, yeah, like we talked about. Absolutely. So Anyone that's fit like that, I have a lot of respect for, and hopefully I'll work with them in the near future. Okay, okay. All right, so, you know, thank you very much for sitting down with the interview, but, you know, let the let the audience know how to find you, how to follow you, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You, you can hit me up on Twitter, at RealSkiff, R-E-A-L-S-K-I-F-F. -F. We're still working on the Instagram, but besides that, you can just follow me on Twitter. Um, we got a tour coming up, shout out Good Music All Day. Dot com. Shout out um, everyone else that's fucking with me. And hit us up, all hands on deck. Holler at us. A boy blue. <laughs> Alright, Skiff, man. Thank you so very, very much for sitting down with us. Thanks for having me, you dog. Know, we really appreciate you taking the time out to meet us. So, um, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that, like that.